Hi there, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike. Let's talk about your first amateur radio HF antenna. you with me again if you're a regular viewer or somebody who's been along the channel before then great to have you back and if you're a new one who's stumbled across me well welcome and I hope you want to click that subscribe button and share anyway enough of that uh, thanks for coming along now what I want to talk to you about today and this may interest some of you who have either been through this process like me or who are looking to take their uh, their foundation license in the UK or maybe your your first step in other countries towards an amateur radio license the big question you're often faced with is, what do you do about your first HF antenna? Now, I don't know about you, but when I first uh, became licensed, or even before actually I first became licensed, uh, the first thing I did was look into the magazines that uh, got published every month, like Practical Wireless in the UK. Uh, started taking Radcom after I became a member of the RSGB, but it was Practical Wireless then. You looked online, you looked on YouTube, and of course you saw plenty of products, nice shiny antennas, didn't you? Uh, I saw things like the buddy pole, the buddy stick, uh, things like the Al um, the Alex loop, alpha loops, chameleon loops, you know, these little magnetic loops. And then you saw the the 9 to 1 antennas, 9 to 1 unknown antennas, the, the antennas by, made by Nelson. And then there's loads of them out there, aren't there? Um, and you saw the nice big shiny verticals, no radial verticals, yeah, uh, from I don't know Cushcraft or Hustler, and you know some of them work really well, but you know, and you saw the prices, the buddy pole is it hundreds, isn't it? I don't know three, four, and five hundred quid. I don't know uh, those verticals I mentioned just now. They're not cheap. Um, the loops, I mean, what is that? What's much as an Alex loop? Three, four, I don't know, four, I don't know, hundreds, isn't it? The MFJ loops as well, they take 100 watts, but they cost a lot of money. Um, you know, there's an all you know, you could spend bucket loads when you first become licensed. Then you start to look into it a bit in a bit more detail. And I went down the road then of actually going down the road of having an, a wire antenna, all right. And that's where you come across some more problems because a lot of people, when they first become licensed, or uh, if they look into being licensed or looking into their first HF antenna at home. The first thing you want to do is go on as many bands as possible. So you want to find an antenna that will work from 80 down to 6 metres. You know, it'll cover everything. I just want one wire that'll do the whole job. So I can flick from band to band, make contacts in the bands that are open, and have a great time. Nice. Though life isn't like that, and neither is the hobby that we love. Um, look, bottom line is, some people make these multi-band uh, nine to one fed wire antennas work extremely well and good luck to them and it works well for some people I know a couple of people who use them and love them and that's brilliant from my perspective and from my own experience and from the experience of lots of people who I know is that uh, when you try and cover that many bands in one piece of wire the chances are with one exception which I'll tell you about in a minute you are probably going to be disappointed. Now that antenna isn't going to be resonant on any band, it can't. You're then reliant on the uh, 9 to 1 transformer to bring it into somewhere near resonance. And if you need the ATU, you would either have an ATU on top of your rig or you'd use the inbuilt ATU on the rig. Problem is though, um, you're going to probably have a lot, a lot of loss in that coax cable you're going to run. You're going to have an antenna which isn't really resonant on, on any band and relies on a run of coax before you actually tune it. Um, you've also got to have a very good ground system with those antennas, otherwise they're extremely noisy. You've got more chance of having quite a lot of RF in the shack. So there's an awful lot that can go wrong with 9 to 1 antennas. Doesn't mean to say they can't work, because lots of people use them and they do, but I find an awful lot of people have tried to use them, probably for their first antenna, and being the disappointed. last thing that you want to happen to you is to become discouraged by the hobby, all right? Now, my advice to you, and this is only my advice for what it's worth, is for your first antenna, if you have any sort of space at all, is put up a dipole, all right? A simple center-fed dipole is all you need. Now, I tried the nine-to-one option, actually just for listening, before I got my license, okay? and I found it was extremely noisy, and I was very worried at that point that actually I couldn't operate at home. 
you install a balanced antenna, which isn't then fed, a balanced antenna, okay? Uh, fed in the middle, with two identical legs coming off the middle of it, then tuned for say 20 meters or 40 if you have the space, and suddenly you'll probably find, depending on your situation, but I certainly found my noise floor halved, and in fact on 20 meters, didn't have any noise, okay? 40 will always be, and the lower bands will always be, nearly always will be, will be noisier because of the nature of the bands, but 20 meters and above, if you center feed a dipole, the chances are you're gonna be fine. Of course, the only problem with a dipole is it's monobanded, but initially, if I were you, I'd focus on two bands, three if you have the room. So I'd focus on 20 meters, which at the moment would be open most of the day. It tends to close in the evening, but now we're approaching summertime, it'll be closing probably around 20 hundred, 2100 UTC, which is about the same sort of time in the UK, we're an hour ahead of, of UTC, so 9, 10 o'clock at night. Um, 40 meters, if you have the room for a 66 foot dipole, I'll be less of course if you fed, feed it as an inverted V, then 40 meters will be open practically all day and will be open well into the night as well, okay, into the early hours. So 40 meters is a great band. In fact, I've had to choose one of those two bands to have to start with. If you've got the room, put a 40 meter dipole up. I really would, because you'll hear Europe a lot in the, in, in the day, a bit of DX in the afternoon from the Far East, and then in the evening, in the night time, you'll hear a lot of North America come over. It's great. It's a really good band. Uh, you need sharp, you need to have sharp elbows because in in Europe you've only got about well in the phone band you've probably got about 120 kilohertz to play with. Uh, in in America you've got 220 you lucky things, um, but it's a really enjoyable band, and I would recommend it. Probably if you had to do one or the other as your first choice. Of course you could put up a fan dipole. We have basically two wires coming off the central feed point. Have one for 40 and one for 20. And to be honest, you can play on your radio at any time of the day or night. Going back to NFEDs, the only NFED antenna that I've really got on with, and I think works brilliantly in fact, is an NFED half wave. Now that's an antenna which isn't fed by a 9 to 1, it's fed by a 49 to 1 or 51, 50 to 1 or sometimes a 60 to 1 transformer. Now, what this means is that the wire itself is cut to a half wavelength of a particular band. So the wire can be, for example, 33 foot long for 20 meters, 66 foot long for 40, or something like 132 foot long for 80 meters. The beauty of that antenna is though it is multiband, and usually multiband without any use or very little use of a tuner. So for example, a 66 foot long N-fed half wave will also be resonant on 33 foot, as a, 30, as a 33 foot antenna, in other words on 20 meters, It'll be resonant on 15 meters and 10 meters because they are harmonics of the 40 meter band. So you've got 7, 14, 21, 28 megahertz. Now the radiation patterns will be different. Okay, it won't radiate as a half wave antenna on 20, it'll radiate as a full wave. And it'll do as a one and a half wave, I think, on 15 and a two wave on 10. Okay, but you'll still have four bands for probably very little, if any, use of an ATU. You'll have an under 2 to 1 SWR which is perfectly usable and by the way you don't have to chase a 1 to 1 SWR or under a 1.5. If your SWR is 2 to 1 or less you'll be fine. Okay unless you're running serious serious power but as a 10 watt station or a 100 watt station for that matter if you're a full license holder don't worry about the SWR. Under 2 to 1 if you want to try and tweak it fine but it doesn't stop you using the radio at all. If you used a 132 foot version of the NFED half wave, you'll have 80, 40, 20, I think 30 will come in as well, possibly with the need of an ATU, because you'll have 3.5 megahertz, 7, near 10.5, so I think 10 meters may need an ATU, 20 meters, 17 meters, which will be around 17.5, 18 megs on the, res on, 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 the, um, on the harmonic, but it won't be far away. Uh, you'll have 15 meters, 12 could possibly come in, and 10. Again, you'll have, when you use a long wire like that, 132 foot, in the higher bands, like 10, 12, 15 meters, you'll have some nulls as well as lobes, but it'll still give you all the bands. And it's a really good antenna. The other thing about it as well is that you have such a high impedance where the antenna is fed. 
okay, a high voltage level, so a high impedance of about, say, two and a half to four and a half thousand ohms. Now, to be honest with you, um, there's not a great need for a counterpoise. It will use the outer braid of your coax as a counterpoise, but uh, a length of wire attached to the ground lug about one twentieth of the length of the lowest frequency. So for example, for 40 meters, uh, run a two meter counterpoise. For 80 meters, run a four meter counterpoise. Not much. And you can put a choke in line a bit as well if you wanted just to, to make sure you don't get any stray RF. But I've run 100 watts on one of those antennas all the time. Portable and at home, never a problem. At home, they are noisier. I find they're about an S point or two noisier on the noise floor than a dipole. But they still work really well. You can feed them at the end. You haven't got to have coax dropping down or ladder line if you're doing a doublet, but that's a different story. Um, and they are convenient antennas to use and they are a great choice. You can make your own transformer. You can buy them commercially. They're not cheap, but there are good makers of them out there. I would go for something like a high-end fed of my antennas and there's a couple of good vendors in the UK, uh, Hamtenna and there's another one called UK Antennas. Uh, look them up. They're very, very good makers of these antennas. So there you go. Um, just some of the experiences I've had. I currently use a doublet. I like dipoles, I like NFED half waves. They're my antennas that I would use. But maybe putting up at 20 or 40 meter dipole would be a good start for you. Get used to the bands. Have confidence in using uh, your mic, getting stuck in there. And then maybe upgrading your antenna afterwards. If you want to go and spend three, five hundred pounds on a new antenna to start with, go for it. My tip there, though, is that don't necessarily think that spending that much money will guarantee you a better experience, because, to be honest, it doesn't. And one other thing, the other most important part of your system, of course, is your coax cable. Don't scrimp on your coax. Try to avoid RG58 if you can. Um, I would go for something like RG213 or even something like an SL7 or an Ultraflex or something like that. But... If you're going to spend a couple of hundred pounds on anything to do with your antenna, spend it on the coax, because that could be where you'll have lots of loss as well. And better quality coax will mean better shielding, a lower noise floor, and you'll get more power out of your antenna, which will improve not only your transmission, but also your receive. Anyway, just some of my thoughts, just some random musings and antennas. I've only been licensed for three years. I've still got a lot to learn. These are the, some of the things I've come through myself. Hope that's of use to you anyway. Uh, if you want to like and share the video, please do so. But I'd love to have you back with me again. This is G5TM, wishing you 73 and above all else, hoping that you're staying healthy and safe. Bye-bye.